I do have skills that make me a nightmare for people like you. G'day guys, how are you? Well, um, this is a more of a promotional thing for another channel. It's called NZ Justice 111. Um, I've spoken to the to the owner of the channel or to the person that that runs it. Um, absolutely gobsmacked. The amount of detail and unequivocal evidence that um, this channel shows in regards to the corruption of the New Zealand Law Society, IPCA, New Zealand Police, Judges, Ministry of Justice and the Crown is unbelievable. Um, there's a couple of matters on their channel that they discuss where one woman and her family have been nothing but tormented for nine years um, and shat on good and proper by a justice system that is clearly corrupt and failed miserably. Go to this channel, subscribe, give them your support because one individual might not be able to do much but when the system has shat on so many individuals and they all get together well then there's something to be said for strength in numbers and I am completely disgusted with the courts, the judiciary, the executive branch, the whole lot of those corrupt bastards need to be looked at and it's only you guys that are going to actually be able to do something I mean the court of public opinion is far more powerful so bear that in mind anyway subscribe to this channel go there watch your jaw will hit the floor just as much as mine did see you later until then bye all welcome to the channel of NZ Justice 111. This is the videos on the New Zealand Law Society and what it does not want you to know. The New Zealand Law Society is not part of the New Zealand government nor is it part of the New Zealand court system. However, it does offer a free service to members of the public if they wish to complain about a lawyer. The New Zealand Law Society tells the general public of New Zealand that they have to follow the rules and sections of law recorded in the Lawyers and Conveyances Act when dealing with complaints. What the New Zealand Law Society are telling the general public is not true. Let's Google the Lawyers and Conveyances Act, or Law Con Act for short. When we go into this act, there are a lot of parts to it. The part that we are looking for is part 7 headed Complaints and Discipline. And if we go to part 7, headed Complaints and Discipline, and start scrolling down. These are the laws and sections of law that instruct how the Law Society should be dealing with complaints. Notice how many laws there are. But more importantly, notice the last rule, headed Protection of New Zealand Law Society. Well, looky here. The New Zealand Law Society is to be under no criminal or civil liability for anything done or omitted to be done when dealing with the general public's complaints against lawyers. In other words, this last rule, or section of law if you want to get legal, recorded under Part 7, Complaints and Discipline, null and voids every other rule recorded under Part 7, thus allowing the New Zealand Law Society to ignore the law when it comes to dealing with complaints about lawyers. As the New Zealand Law Society can do as it pleases with the general public's complaints filed against lawyers, who are more often than not Law Society members, it is no surprise that the Society dismisses over a thousand complaints a year. As proof of this, here is a screenshot of what is recorded in the New Zealand Law Society's annual report for 2017. The number of complaints dismissed each year, 
starting with 2012 and ending in 2017, is highlighted in blue. The number of complaints dismissed each year never falls below a thousand. Thanks to Rule 272 of the Lawyers and Conveyances Act, which unjustly protects the New Zealand Law Society from any civil or criminal liability, for not following the law when dealing with the general public's complaints against lawyers, the number of complaints dismissed each year will most certainly continue to be above a thousand. The New Zealand Law Society throws out over a thousand complaints a year filed against lawyers by members of the public. NZ Justice 111 will show you another sneaky little trick the New Zealand Law Society plays against the public and it goes like this. The New Zealand Government, via the Lawyers and Conveyances Act, or Law Con Act for short, instructed the New Zealand Law Society to establish a service to receive the public's complaints against lawyers. The New Zealand Law Society established this service and called it the Lawyers Complaints Service. The Society fully funds this complaint service and has total control over who sits on the Society's 24 Standards Committees that decide the fate of the general public's complaints filed against lawyers. If a member of the public gets upset about their complaint being thrown out and contacts the New Zealand Law Society to discuss it, they are told, in no uncertain terms, that it was not the New Zealand Law Society who threw out their complaint, it was the independent office called the Lawyers Complaints Service. What members of the public are being told by the New Zealand Law Society is nothing short of dishonest trickery. For it is the New Zealand Law Society who established the Lawyers Complaints Service in the first place and fully fund that service. The Society is also in total control over who will sit on their standards committees that decide the fate of the general public's complaints against lawyers. To prove this dishonest trickery is being used against the public by the New Zealand Law Society, here is a copy of a 2012 email sent to a member of the public after their complaint had been thrown out. The email is from the then current Law Society President Jonathan Tim, and it reads, The Standards Committee of the Complaint Service are independent of the New Zealand Law Society. The complaint service is independent. I, as president, or the board of the New Zealand Law Society, or the council of the New Zealand Law Society, do not control or oversee the complaint service. And here is the current New Zealand Law Society president, Catherine Beck, using the same excuse as Mr. Tim, the alleged independent complaint service, to distance the New Zealand Law Society from being rightly accountable to the general public regarding complaints that have been filed against lawyers who are more often than not Law Society members. Ms Beck's letter reads, Thank you for your emails of 10th and 12th February 2018. As the President of the New Zealand Law Society, I am unable to intervene in a matter that is being considered or has been considered by the Independent Standards Committee of the Lawyers' Complaints Service. Mr. Tim and Ms. Beck's letters prove that the New Zealand Law Society takes absolutely no responsibility for complaints against lawyers being thrown out. If that is the case, the New Zealand Law Society should stop deceiving the New Zealand public by advertising the society runs a free service should anyone wish to file a complaint about a lawyer. NZ Justice 111 will show you how the Ministry of Justice helps the New Zealand Law Society trick the general public into working for the society for free, so it can unjustly earn itself tens of thousands of dollars each year off the backs of hard-working, unsuspecting New Zealanders. We will show you how the New Zealand Law Society, with the help of the Ministry of Justice, lures unsuspecting, hard-working New Zealanders into a web of deception that earns the New Zealand Law Society tens of thousands of dollars each year. When a member of the public 
files a complaint about their lawyer into the New Zealand Law Society and the complaint is thrown out, which is normally what happens, they will be told to go to the Legal Complaints Review Officer if they wish their complaint against their lawyer to be reconsidered. To prove this, here is a screenshot of what members of the public receive after their complaints have been thrown out. Notice this records that you can find information on the Legal Complaints Review Officer, or LCRO for short, via the New Zealand Ministry of Justice website. Don't be fooled. The LCRO is fully funded by the New Zealand Law Society and has nothing to do with the Ministry of Justice. To prove this, here is a copy of an email sent to a member of the public by the former president of the New Zealand Law Society, Jonathan Ten, and it reads, The LCRO is not a Ministry of Justice office. It is completely independent of the Ministry of Justice and has nothing to do with that ministry. So let's Google the LCRO, shall we? Well, looky here. The LCRO is being advertised on the Ministry of Justice website as if it was a Ministry of Justice office, when it is clearly not, as confirmed by former New Zealand Law Society President Jonathan Tim. Each year, unsuspecting members of the public file applications into the LCRO, falsely believing it to be a Ministry of Justice office that is independently reviewing New Zealand Law Society decisions that threw out their complaints about their lawyers. There is currently a four-year waiting list at the LCRO before members of the public are able to get a hearing. If by chance a member of the public proves to the LCRO that their lawyer did do them wrong and that the New Zealand Law Society should not have thrown out their complaint, the LCRO, more times often than not, will order the lawyer to pay not the member of the public that they harmed, but the New Zealand Law Society, who threw out the complaint against the lawyer in the first place. So what does the LCRO award a member of the public, who has worked countless hours and waited up to four years to successfully prove the New Zealand Law Society was wrong to throw out their complaint? More times often than not, the LCRO awards a member of the public zero. Here is the proof. This is a screenshot of an LCRO decision which clearly shows one of the New Zealand Law Society's Standards Committee's decisions that throughout the complaint about the lawyer is being reversed by the LCRO. The lawyer, which the LCRO hides their real name, is then ordered to pay the New Zealand Law Society a $2,000 fine and $1,200 in costs making this a total of $3,200. The member of the public who proved the New Zealand Law Society was wrong in throwing out their complaint gets zero. These awards by the LCRO to the New Zealand Law Society go a lot higher than this. The biggest one NZ Justice 111 has found, which is shown here, awards the New Zealand Law Society a total of $18,900 with the member of the public who was called UY and won against the New Zealand Law Society awarded nothing. The New Zealand Law Society's free service offered to the general public of New Zealand to complain about lawyers brings in a steady income for the society each year. All they have to do is offer a free service, throw out complaints and let members of the public do the best so the New Zealand Law Society can earn itself thousands each year off the backs of hard-working Kiwis. The Ministry of Justice is far from innocent when it comes to helping the New Zealand Law Society trick people into working for the society for free. NZ Justice 111 will give you the names of the people who are employed as legal complaints review officers. These officers unjustly award thousands of dollars each year to the New Zealand Law Society after the society has wrongfully thrown out complaints filed by members of the public against lawyers. These legal complaints review officers are not supposed to be lawyers. This is confirmed in the Lawyers and Conveyances Act 
or your con act for short, under number 190, and it reads, A person who is not a lawyer or a conveyancing practitioner is to be appointed to be the legal complaints review officer. Don't be fooled. The current legal complaints review officers are made up of one lawyer and two barristers. So how on earth did they become legal complaints review officers? Each year, the New Zealand Law Society requires lawyers and barristers to pay an annual fee to keep their practicing law certificates current. If a lawyer or barrister does not renew their annual practicing certificate, they are then technically deemed to be not a lawyer or a barrister. They are then able to apply and get the job as a legal complaints review officer. If we go back to rule 190, which clearly states an officer is not to be a lawyer, you will see when it comes to selecting who will become a legal complaints review officer, the New Zealand Law Society has its snout firmly in the trough. NZ Justice 111 now names who these current legal complaints review officers are. Rex Maidment Barrister Bruce Galloway Lawyer Dorothy Fresher Barrister These legal complaints review officers, who are not supposed to be lawyers or barristers for that fact, are assisted by two delegates. Their names are Owen Vaughan, former law firm partner of Wiltshire Stone Lawyers Limited. This law firm has now amalgamated with another, which is perfectly acceptable. However, in doing so, all trace Mr. Vaughan was a law firm partner has now vanished off the internet. Mr. Vaughan is also a former legal complaints review officer. And finally, but by no means least, the second delegate is Robert Hesketh, a disgraced New Zealand judge who admitted to committing fraud, as seen here in an article published by the New Zealand Herald. The two delegates, Mr. Vaughan and Mr. Hescliffe, currently assist Barristers Maidment and Thresher and Lawyer Galloway in their position as Legal Complaints Review Officers to award thousands of dollars to the New Zealand Law Society each year after that society has been proven wrong by members of the public for throwing out their complaints that they have filed against their lawyers. The salaries of these Legal Complaints Review Officers and their delegates are fully paid for by the New Zealand Law Society with assistance from the Society of Conveyances. In fact, the entire cost to run the Office of the Legal Complaints Review Officer is paid for by the New Zealand Law Society and the Society of Conveyances. To prove this, here is number 217 of the Lawyers and Conveyances Act which records each year the New Zealand Law Society and the Society of Conveyances must pay the Ministry of Justice for the total costs to function the office of the LCRO. By the Ministry of Justice, using the New Zealand Law Societies and the Society of Conveyances money to pay for the office of the LCRO, it deceitfully makes it appear as if this office belongs to the Ministry of Justice. This is clearly not the case The former New Zealand Law Society President, Jonathan Tim, that reads, The LCRO is not a Ministry of Justice office. It is completely independent of the Ministry of Justice and has nothing to do with that ministry. NZ Justice 111 now ends what the New Zealand Law Society does not want you to know. We hope that the information and evidence has been helpful to you. If you wish to contact NZ Justice 111, just go to our Facebook page.
Until next time, keep safe. Moody, cocky, let it go.